What Up Hyper Change. Little impromptu episode here. I'm scheming off the cuff because I just got back from an, I've, I had an insane day and I wanna fill y'all in. I was at Redmond here, Redmond, Washington, uh, the home of Microsoft and the world's best satellite engineering talent. I was visiting a little company called StarCloud, filmed the whole video that I'm gonna release uh, in the next few days here on the channel. And StarCloud is building these crazy ambitious data center, AI data centers in space. What? Yeah, yeah, literally launch, their plan is to launch basically NVIDIA's on Starship or Falcon 9, send them to space, and they build this box that houses all the data centers and runs all this compute for AI in space and then beams it down to Earth using Starlink. And what was so fascinating to me is this was one of the first use cases um, of the new space economy that Starlink and SpaceX are building. SpaceX is, and, and you just hear Philip, the founder of StarCloud, talk about how SpaceX is radically transforming not only the cost to go to space, but the capacity they are building of the tonnage that they can launch to space is absolutely absurd. So in Elon Musk's vision to try and get to Mars, he is innovating and these in a, he's totally transforming space. He's he, like NASA got us to the moon and then dwindled. And now we have SpaceX taking us to just insane, unprecedented heights. And what that boils down to here, I was talking to Grok, the launch of, uh, of a Falcon 9 is something like 100 to 300 million. A fully reusable Starship could be two to 10 million. So SpaceX has already radically transformed spaceflight and become the dominant player in launching stuff to space. But they have done nothing yet. Starship, the rocket that the media makes fun of for blowing up and we, everyone's trying to go to the launches to, that is their holy grail. That in many ways is SpaceX's you know, Model 3, Model Y platform. That, the thing that is sort of the final arc of where their business wants to go in terms of a rocket with size and reusability to get them to Mars. And so when we have Starship, I was talking to Philip and what blew my mind is like Falcon 9, the upper stage isn't reusable. Starship's fully reusable, and they're trying to build, you know, the pump these enough of these out to bring a whole civilization to Mars. This is going to radically decrease the cost to get to space. And then you think about essentially how you have SpaceX and Starship itself is launching things to space. That's like the railroads of space. And then you have Starlink, which is the internet of space, the connectivity that sort of makes the magic happen between all these things that you're launching to space. And so it really dawned on me watching StarCloud, whether they succeed or not, I mean, incredibly cool and ambitious company of, I felt like I was watching one of the first super apps built on this new space economy. You know, like we all talk about the railroads that SpaceX is building, but what will get built on top of that? Is it asteroid mining? Is it AI data centers? Is it, there's so many different like crazy Star Trek sort of businesses, manufacturing in space, living in space. Um, science experiments in space, all sorts of crazy potential things that I can't even wrap my head around or imagine, but I know that humanity's potential of staying on this little rock we're on versus expanding, like, I feel like we're gonna expand in perpetuity. And what, when I was talking to Philip about AI compute in space, he had this theory that like 99% of all compute will eventually go to space if you go far enough in the future. And I thought that was so interesting that in some ways, Earth is so small when you think about the needs and ambitions of some of these AI projects. And it just got me thinking of Elon Musk getting us to Mars and SpaceX coming up with Starship. Once they perfect Starship and they're selling, you know, you can just pay a whatever, however amount to get your little seat on Starship and launch whatever you want to space. This is gonna make so many different business models economical that were never possible before. I think it's gonna to lead to the golden age of innovation in space. Um, SpaceX is this incredible, like literally, I think of it as like the railroads of space. And now what gets, you know, we don't even think of the railroads of America anymore. Like we built the railroads and that connected the whole country and then unlocked all this trade and commerce and incredible GDP growth. And, but we don't even think of the railroads as being the exciting part. So right now we're just thinking of the SpaceX rockets, Starship, the new railroads, but what will get built on top of that because of Starship is gonna be insane. And it's gonna be Star Trek, sci-fi, um, the space economy that once fizzled from before I was alive, 50 years ago, going, we gotta watch people go to the moon. Like that sounded sick. Nothing has happened since, but we're coming back to the turning point. All the talk about the space economy to me was kind of like, I mean, I guess SpaceX is going to Mars. That is a mission I can get behind and I understood. But the other space economy just didn't make sense to me. And so after seeing it today and seeing so many smart people building the actual 
like they're like, no, no, Starship is gonna drop the cost of launching. And when that happens, we can do this and then we can do that. And so, I don't know, it's just super inspiring to see this, what feels like a new frontier for humanity and for tech innovators um, is space. And so I feel like I got space pilled today. Like I'm more bullish on space than ever. I feel like it's inevitable that Starship and Starlink together are gonna to transform the potential for space. It's gonna unlock a massive wave of entrepreneurship and opportunity to build space businesses. Um, and I feel like I kind of saw one today, StarCloud. Like, so it, it, just, it just blew my mind. And I, the scale of how much decreasing the cost to, of ton, getting tonnage to space will unlock possibilities. So anyway, this is kind of my ramble. Um, just wanted to record my thoughts because I was so, this is, I feel like I saw a glimpse into the future today and it was so cool. So I can't wait to, to share the StarCloud video with you. I'm not trying to hype it up, but it just, I wanted to record this first, but I will put that out soon. Um, and I wanted to ask y'all, what, what do you think? If you could build a business or you have an idea, maybe ask Rock, like what are people gonna build in this new space economy? Once SpaceX, once SpaceX does Starship and Starlink, the potential for space businesses is incredible. And so what should humanity do? What are the opportunities? I mean, StarCloud wasn't even something I was thinking of, you know, AI data centers in space until I heard their business model. And now I'm like, wait, that actually might work. That's a crazy, that's a crazy, anyway. So what else is out there? Are you a believer in the space economy? Um, because I, I think we're at sort of this, this crazy era now where we're becoming like, I grew up traveling you know, I love travel. I love, I try, my, my goal is to like try and go everywhere in the world. Like I love exploring and, and, and it's so easy and accessible and you can just buy a flight and get anywhere in the world. Um, and I think humans in their DNA are explorers. So to me, it feels like the moon and you know, okay, it's a two year flight to Mars, but like, I don't know, it's not that bad, especially if they make it comfy. Probably won't be at first, but you know what I'm saying? So I, there's a, it's, it's, very inspiring, I think, that we're on the cusp of not being confined to Earth. Um, and, you know, it starts with sending up AI data centers and a bunch of other random stuff to space before humans, but I think the space economy is real. And I do more than ever now think that our future looks like a lot more like Star Trek and Star Wars um, than our world today. And I think that's pretty crazy and exciting. So, I mean, if you just extrapolate, unless humans die out, we need more space. Like, I feel like we're gonna want more space, um, especially if we all have phones that use AIs that are taking up so much data that we need all these data centers. Like, the footprint and ecological footprint of one human to me seems to be expanding unless we can figure out how to make it, you know, use less resources on Earth to power AI, which is why StarCloud's kind of cool. So, and another thing that struck me about this whole thing is like, the, you know, it's easy to talk about companies and industries, but it's all about people that are making it happen. So I think seeing all these smart people working on space, seeing new capital going into space, uh, seeing Elon commercialize Starship, like th that's kind of exciting and inspiring. And I feel like I'm really seeing the world's smartest people who are building the future are in space. Like it doesn't matter if you don't like space or don't care about it. Like this is, these, these people are making it happen uh, with or without you. So pretty, pretty inspiring. So. Anyway, I'll probably go into space eventually now that I think about it. Like, I don't know, would you go to space? I'm thinking it. Once they make it safe enough, I definitely will. But I'm thinking first, let's send a data center or something else or a Tesla bot, right? Anyway, space economy is about the thousand X and going to be real. And Star Trek is coming just a matter of time. So buckle up and let's cross our fingers that Starship crushes it because it's all, it's all in Starship. Let's be real. If Starship doesn't work then. This is the whole space economy is not going to really happen, but I mean, don't bet against Elon. Anyway, peace.